Are we closer to the second Starship orbital flight attempt? A day after the Federal Aviation Administration completed the safety review of SpaceX's Starship, the private company restacked Ship 25 onto Booster 9 again. The ship Squid is also back face-hugging S-25. The overall process looked relatively smooth this time around. However, it's still not the full stack for launch, as the FTS has not been armed. Its purpose, and this may seem crazy, is to train the Mechazilla arm with S-25. The ship has been stacked and destacked a total of five times so far, but you can definitely see how they've tweaked the process. Each time this process occurs, there's more data on how the tower, chopsticks, ship, booster, and more react to different loads and wind speeds. In any case, the stacking still means that launch day is fast approaching. According to Christian Davenport, a very trustworthy space reporter at the Washington Post, a November 6th SpaceX Starship launch date is off the table. But work continues and an attempt this month is still very much on the table as SpaceX and the FAA work closely together. The meeting with Elon Musk and the FAA officials last month was cordial and productive. Now, though the review is complete, Starship does not yet have a license to launch. The FAA must additionally, in collaboration with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, complete an environmental review. Starship will not be able to fly until that review is complete. It remains unclear how soon the review will be completed, though it is likely that Starship will fly soon after it is wrapped up. The Starship Super Heavy rocket is the most powerful launch system ever developed, according to SpaceX, standing at nearly 400 feet tall and designed to carry up to 100 people on lengthy interplanetary flights. Indeed, the biggest goal that CEO Elon Musk has for Starship revolves around interplanetary travel. Hop in, boys, we're going to Mars. Musk wrote in a post on X.com Thursday night. He also responded to a video showing the size of the Starship on X and wrote, it's meant for making life multiplanetary. He said in October that the reason the rocket is so large is that it must be capable of comfortably carrying a large crew as well as millions of tons of construction equipment. Musk said at the time he could see an uncrewed Starship mission landing on Mars within the next three to four years. And once SpaceX can establish in-flight fuel transfers, Starship should be able to traverse the entire solar system. I'm optimistic that we can take a Starship that's fairly unmodified. I suspect you could land the Starship on the moon, Musk said at the time. You could go to the asteroid belt, the moons of Jupiter, the moons of Saturn. Getting to Mars, however, is only one part of a two-pronged problem. Once Musk lands on the red planet, he has to figure out how to survive on Mars, with the eventual goal of building some sort of society on the planet. The first step, Musk told Joe Rogan on a recent episode of his podcast, The Joe Rogan Experience, calls for a life support system. But over time, Musk said, you can terraform Mars. During the podcast, Musk highlighted the challenges that must be overcome to make Mars habitable. One major hurdle is the planet's thin atmosphere, which is around 1% of Earth's and consists mainly of CO2, or carbon dioxide. Musk envisions implementing a life support system to create a sustainable environment while work is underway to change Mars' atmosphere. His approach involves warming Mars up over a prolonged period, which releases frozen CO2, densifies the atmosphere, and makes it more conductive to human life. Surprisingly, Musk suggests that global warming would be beneficial for Mars in this context. Another crucial aspect Musk addresses is the abundance of ice on Mars due to its greater distance from the sun compared to Earth. He suggests that if Mars were warmed up, a stunning 40% of the planet would be covered in oceans, with depths reaching a mile. These scenarios illustrate the potential for transforming Mars into a more Earth-like environment far better suited to sustaining human life. Musk acknowledges that his plan lacks specific details on how to achieve the necessary warming of Mars, but the guiding principles behind successful terraforming have been outlined. However, he recognizes that there are numerous other obstacles to overcome in the journey towards making Mars habitable. Transportation is one such challenge currently being addressed by Musk and SpaceX. The Starship, a groundbreaking spacecraft under development, holds the promise of 
providing a viable means of travel to and from Mars. With the successful orbit of the Starship and its potential reusability, civilization could unlock a transportation method that would make multiple trips to Mars feasible and commence the terraforming process. Did you know? A 2005 report from NASA's Ames Research Center found that the best way to make Mars livable for humans would involve injecting synthetic greenhouse gases into its atmosphere. If scientists were to inject 300 parts per million of a gas mixture featuring fluorine and carbon into Mars' atmosphere, a greenhouse gas effect similar to that taking place on Earth would occur. Over time, the ice would melt, as Musk said, adding more carbon to the atmosphere and further increasing the temperature. This process, scientists said at the time, could take thousands of years to complete. Warming Mars up, however, and making it livable are two very different things. Chris McKay, a prominent NASA scientist, shared in 2015 that there remain several unknowns relevant to warming up the planet. Mars does have enough water, that we know. But we don't know if Mars has enough carbon dioxide and nitrogen, he said. Nitrogen is probably the most serious. The amount in the atmosphere as nitrogen is much too small. McKay said at the time that it would take roughly a hundred years to warm Mars up. However, McKay goes on to say, there are two ultimate sources of motivation and interest in Mars. First, it is the connection to the search for life, perhaps finding a second genesis of life on Mars. Then, it's Mars as a potential place where humans can live and work. I am happy to have contributed a small bit to those questions, he added. I don't imagine I will see answers to them anytime soon. In short, Musk's grand vision of ensuring the survival of humanity by making Mars habitable is both ambitious and inspiring. While many hurdles remain, his dedication to advancing space exploration and the potential for creating a multi-planetary civilization offers a glimpse into a future where humanity thrives beyond the confines of Earth. Finally, in another piece of interesting news, Virgin Galactic is set to take off on its fifth commercial space flight from Spaceport America in New Mexico today at around 9 a.m. MDT. The flight will mark half a year of consistent monthly launches for the spaceflight company. The mission will carry three passengers as well as Virgin Galactic crew aboard the VSS Unity space plane on a suborbital mission on which cabin occupants will experience several minutes of weightlessness at the edge of space. Whether or not the passenger names for each flight are made public is a decision made between those ticket holders and Virgin Galactic, and not every passenger over the last few months has opted to have their name published before their flight. For Galactic 05, two of the three passengers' names were released earlier in October and the pair happen to already be well-known in the space industry. Alan Stern is a planetary scientist and vice president of the Space Science Division at the Southwest Research Institute in Boulder, Colorado. He's been involved in several NASA research missions throughout his career and currently serves as principal investigator of the New Horizons mission to Pluto and the Kuiper Belt. These missions were each sponsored by their respective organizations, both of which are focused on research. Their primary objectives during Galactic 05 will be to complete a series of experiments that each will be conducting inside the short window of weightlessness during the apogee of their flight. The third private passenger was not named in Virgin Galactic's release, but was specified as someone of Franco-Italian nationality. Following their short stint on the top of the world, VSS Unity and its crew will return for a landing back at the runway at Spaceport America, followed shortly by V. MSE. This is also an exciting mission. So go on out there and break a leg, Galactic 05. Everybody's watching. Well, folks, that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and if you'd like to support our channel even further, you can go on ahead and hop on over to our Patreon through the link in the description below. When you subscribe, you get access to exclusive content, so we hope to see you there. Otherwise, we appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.